Pyrokinesis and two Lightning Bolt. Pyrokinesis in this matchup could be absolutely backbreaking. And also, I think very importantly, um, check out this package. He's got a Sting Scorger, which is not totally uncommon. He's got a Sharpshooter, which has really seen a resurgence lately because of all the creature decks. Mm -hmm. But then, count them, two Tuk Tuk Scrappers. Wow. So he's definitely going after artifacts. Um, the you know who he's going after? He's, he's going, going after, after Maverick. He's going after Maverick. Uh, Pyrokinesis is usually something that's only played out of the board in Goblins. I've seen that oftentimes he does have a third one on the board, but no, he has them in the main. Um, so we're we'll starting this match. Uh, what's interesting is that Brett Paris, one of the more interesting things that we've seen in some decks lists recently against Maverick has been Sulfur Elemental. Brett is not running that right now, but against Mother of Runes and possibly Lingering Souls, it's something which we're expecting to see. So, between Denny and Brett, they're going to be getting started any second here. So, Denny's deck, as I said earlier, only three Stoneforge Mystics. Uh, he still is playing a four Mother Runes, four Knight of the Relicate, but only three Noble Hierarchs. So, he actually has Scrib Rangers in the main, which are pro blue, so may not be as useful in this matchup. Uh, two Scavenging Ooze, a Bird of Paradise, an Eternal Witness, a Gaddock Teague, and a Thrun, all in his main deck. Two players, <laughs> uh, I believe, discussing. Can't, can't can't tell what they're discussing, but uh, Brett Paris, four Goblin Lackey, two Warren Instigator, hoping to land one of those early. He's also running two Mog War Marshal, only two Pile Drivers, uh, and then four ofs on your Ringleaders, Chieftains, Matrons, things that you'd usually expect out of the deck. So turn one, we see Jenny Chan leading on Noble Hierarch, uh, which. Goblin's player, off mountain, probably playing a goblin. And he does have his lackey. So Denny, hopefully having a two drop, which we should expect him to have, to be able to stop the lackey from unleashing a horde of goblins. Now we both players now knowing the matchup. Both are three and O here at Star City Sacramento. This is the fourth round of the Legacy Open. Denny has a Mother of Runes, but appears to maybe not have a creature other than Mother of Runes. Not really wanting to trade the Mother of Runes for the Lackey. He's instead going to Zenith for two. Really important that he gets a blocker in here. So his options will be Scrib Ranger, Scavenging Ooze, and Kasali Pride Mage. I would expect to see the Scavenging Ooze here. Ooze is so good. The Life Gain is just such an important card or effect in so many different matchups. Now, tell me... Brett is not is running in the mono red version. I said before does not run Rishid in port. And now Rishid in port is usually a, a, a mainstay of the mono red goblins builds, isn't it? You know I've been seeing less Rishid in ports lately. It in the in the past it was usually a four and four. Oh, and now oh my oh, goodness, boy. the main deck pyrokinesis really showing its strength here. Oh, that is. <laughs> And kind of devastating. He, he was gunning for Maverick, and oh my, is he ever gunning for it? And then look, a and then waste land, his land. And then a lackey's gonna do what? And you can only hope it's not a Siege Gang Commander. And it's... That's Siege Gang Commander, isn't it? It's alternate art for Siege Gang. And that's Kiki Jiki. Kiki Jiki oh, Mirror Kiki Breaker. Kiki Jiki. <laughs> so, Mother of Runes. <laughs> eating a Lightning Bolt. Oh my god, Lightning Bolt. So, Brett Priest's hand was all... all must have been Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt, Pyrokinesis, Goblin Lackey. At end you of know, turn, he, he makes be, a fake Goblin Lackey. He must be very happy to see that Denny Chan did not swords the initial Goblin Lackey, as his hand was kind of all in on the Lackey. Wow. No other land. Another, he another pyrokinesis, pyrokinesis in hand. Uh, no real threat, but as soon as he draws uh, a well, Goblin... Well, I mean, that's still four damage. I mean, as soon as he draws, say he draws a Goblin Matron, then... <laughs> oh my. Because <laughs> he can stack the triggers <laughs> off two Lackeys and... Play most of his de play out of Siege King. That was exciting. You asked me a question, and now I don't even remember. I'm still kind of all. I was talking about why the lack of Rishan Port. Oh, um, I was going to say, um, lately Rishan and Port has really been falling to the waysides. A lot of people are not running Ladies it in. Oh, there we see a uh, chieftain. Chieftain. Wow, no war chiefs. No, just chieftains. Just chieftain, no war chiefs. Oh my, I didn't. You're right, the first time there are no Goblin War Chiefs in this Uma deck. Uma Zawa's Jite. And now we're going to see a copy of the War Chief. Sorry, the, the chieftain. chieftain. That means that on this turn, when he copies the Chieftain again, that's going to be three Chiefs in play, if he wants. It's going to be quite a lot of damage. That'll be a 4-4, four, four, a 4-4, four, four, and a 3-3. Three, three. And No, 3-4, but that'll be 15 damage. The possibility of 15 damage if he copies the Chieftain.
Is that a wasteland in hand too? No, the, um, I believe, no, there's one in the yard. Did he draw one? I think he might have drawn one. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I can't uh, verify nor deny. Either way, the pyrokinesis that's in his hand, I think, provided he has another red card, is, is superb right now. Okay, I'm not sure what they're discussing right now. Perhaps the size of the Chiefs. Now remember, what's happening here, the Kiki Jiki has a Chief copy in play, and it's untapped, because there's that little window at end of turn. At end of turn and until end of turn are two very different things. Yeah, now this was discovered in uh, the most part by Dominic Reisland, a Milwaukee area judge, and then brought to U.S. Nationals, well, was... and eventually used by Kyle Rose to win that U.S. National. Now, it was originally used with Waylay, wasn't yeah, it? That's correct. Waylay was the card. And uh, flavorfully, the knights are supposed to waylay a dragon, but instead they were getting in their own opinion and saying, I'm not going to fight this dragon, I'm going to attack the other person. Yeah, it was called White Lightning by a lot of people. Yeah. And, and Denny Chan <laughs> just scoops it on up. So Brett Paris with a Goblins deck, very much tuned to trying to sneak Goblins back in past these Mystic decks that have kicked it to the side. And as we saw in game one, they're really playing a lot of cards that um, oh. are... He has drawn a target on Stone Forge Mystic okay, and is going for it. Okay, guess what he has in the board. Okay, so we were talking earlier yesterday about how when you see an opponent and you're like, oh my god, they have all these main deck hate cards for red, you, you know they're going to have even more hate cards in the sideboard. You expect well, he's even got these more. main deck hate cards, in this case, Goblins has it for Maverick. He's got anarchy in the sideboard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. anarchy, for those of you who don't know, red, red, too. Destroy all white permanents. <laughs> it's two anarchy. It's, that's one, not, that's another, not targeted. Py, another pyrokinesis. Okay, what are the cards that it kills for Mother uh, on this side? Mother, Knight of the Reliquary, uh, Stoneforge Mystic, Kasali Pride Mage, um, Gaddock Teague. It doesn't exactly kill Gaddock Teague since you can't cast it, but that's a pretty good start. White permanents? It kills the one of oh, Knight Elspeth. Knight Elspeth it kills Errant. Elspeth, the Knight Errant. <laughs> And all of the soldiers that might be out. <laughs> okay, so he's got Anarchy. He's got another Pyrokinesis. Okay, uh, this might be an awesome 2-0, but we'll see. Other side of the table, what do we got? Uh, we have a lot of one ofs We have um, two Paths to Exiles and a Maze of it. Uh, I think those are very valuable. Coming in. We also have... The, the Tudor Canis package is typically for combos that'll probably be left out. He may bring in an Oblivion Ring as well. Yeah. That seems rational. And look at the smile on Brett's face. He's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was ready for this. This is awesome. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> in my neck of the woods, all of my friends play Maverick. Everybody plays Maverick. This, well, this is how you're supposed to build Mono Red Goblins. Oh, man. You know, I, I don't know uh, Brett Paris. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was one of two things here. If he was either looking for kind of a more budget build for his deck, because this is a pretty cheap deck he's got here in terms of the valuable cards. He's got four Wasteland. He only has two pile driver. Yeah, I mean, there, this is a very inexpensive deck that he has here. Um, and so there's always the possibility of him building to his budget, or alternately, he could just be somebody that's loved goblins forever. Right. Uh, I mean, there are certain aspects to Tuk Tuk Scrapper. Um, different, but I'm not going to say worse. Uh, I definitely don't think worse, because uh, Tuk Tuk Scrapper, that little nudge of damage is really, really I mean, powerful. He has a lot of the utility goblins in his main deck, as, you know, he has two pile drivers, I mean, uh, two, or not two pile drivers, sorry, uh, he has a sharp, the sharpshooter in the main, he has two scrappers in the main. I like the look of this deck, honestly. Um, it looks like it's a deck that's primarily designed to, even more than other decks of this ilk, um, other goblin decks, to really rule the board. And that looks like it's what it's trying to do. I mean, kind of, it seems like he's a little bit forsaken his combo matchup. He's not playing, he has three Chalice of the Void in the board, but he's no, no Pyrostatic Pillar, you know, no Mind Break Trap. I think he's really hoping just to beat up on aggro. I mean, essentially, uh, his answer to combo is Chalice of the Void. Chalice and, and Crossed Fingers. Yeah, Chalice and <laughs> Crossed Fingers. Hope this Chalice does it. Honestly, crossing your fingers can sometimes be, in Legacy, one of the best choices because you, can, you simply cannot beat everything. 
And one of the things is that what we know, what we, um, yeah, one of the things that uh, we were talking about earlier about when you said sometimes the best play is across your fingers is that we talked about when you have a matchup game one that's a 20% win, even if your sideboard can raise it to 50%, sometimes that, that still mathematically is not good with you, and sometimes it's best just to not try to win that matchup and instead try to win the ones that you actually yeah. can win. Particularly if it means that you end up shaving off your percentages against the other, other 98% of the field. Yeah, it might be better just to have more cards for the matchups that you intend to win and just say, well, this matchup's really bad. I'm going to hope to avoid it. Turn one, Green Sun Zenith from Denny Chan to get a uh, Dryad Arbor. We actually see a lot of decks in Legacy do that, forsaking their combo matchups. Uh, when you see decks like Lands or Enchantress, oftentimes those decks have a very hard time with you know storm-based decks. You can see the players not really try very hard to beat them, instead just assume, you know, make sure that they beat the decks that they're supposed to beat. Aether Vial. Aether Vial fast here, but because he's not running... Ooh. Oh, Dryad Arbor in for the beats. Dryad Arbor gets in there. Uh, Aether Vial not as scary in this matchup as it is against, say, a more counterspell heavy deck. It's really just an elf, essentially. Yep. And uh, Aether Vial to one. And he once again Brett with a Pyrokinesis in his hand. And a Lightning Bolt. So probably the Lightning Bolt when they're getting pitched to the Pyrokinesis to eat Dryad Arbor and perhaps if he sees Denny tap out for a Knight of the Reliquary, maybe, maybe both of them. Right. Brett with a, sl a unusually slow start out of Goblins. going to Lightning Bolt the Dryad Arbor. Okay. So it has other plans for the Pyrokinesis. Beep. And... No other plays right now. It's a Gem Palm Incinerator. Uh, Brett missing his third land drop. And Green, Green Sun's, Sun's for two. Probably getting scavenging ooze again. Pride Mage on the Aether Vial? Against a red deck, I almost would prefer a card that just is very good at getting big. No, but he's, you're right, he's going to go for the Kazali Pride Mage. Uh, but go. not blow up the Aether Vial. And as long as Brett is not... Uh... Oh, fetch in response bolt. Oh, wow. I would like oh, to wow. in response, there. in response, uh, he's, uh, the bolt's already gone. Oh, okay, there it is. Uh, pitching a shattering spree. An interesting sideboard choice for Brett to board back in. Um, hey. His opponent only has three pieces of equipment, so I'm not sure about the boarding in of shattering spree. That seems a little overly ambitious. The As less goblins you have, the less good your goblin uh, linear cards are. As it turns out, it's just fine here in that, um, well... We're going to see a Matron. It, it was a red card. Yeah, Matron out. So, as a note, Denny may have wanted to, if he had every intention of blowing up the Aether oh right gosh. away. Oh my gosh, is that a Warren instigator? That is a Warren instigator. Oh. It seems like he, Brett, Denny would have wanted to have cracked his fetch land before casting his Green Sun Zenith in these instance that Brett had some sort of removal spell for the Pride Mage. Yes. Absolutely. War, Warren instigator, a card that Brett can cast. We also see in his hand, act now, there, he could have done some, some nifty end step shenanigans because we also see in Brett's hand uh, that there is a goblin chieftain. So he may next turn give, giving everything haste to uh, Swords will <laughs> Swords. take care of that. Gain one life, Brett. Well, Instigator actually, for the most part, um, not as scary of a card anymore. The Ether Vial will achieve most of the things that the Instigator would try to. I'm thinking it's more the damage. I mean, that's, that, that's a very legitimate concern. With a Matron, it's a four power. Or with uh, a chief, chieftain, a four two, power. two plus two, double strikies. We see yes, some three another. card Monty from Denny as he moves things around back and yep. forth, back and forth. Tap, we're gonna probably see a war chief, chieftain, mm -hmm. I should say, goblin chieftain in play, a pair of tutus at the ready. And that's on that's during his upkeep, chieftain. Interesting. Oh. Hang on oh, a second, they go another attack? swords. No, nope. nope. that guy's getting swords. Denny, firing off swords to plowshares. In for one. Really, Denny needs to just buy time until he can stabilize, until he can grab a Stoneforge Mystic or a Knight of the Reliquary. We see another matron in uh, Brett's hand. Another matron, a Gem Palm Incinerator, a Wasteland, 
Wasteland a little dicey to play here as the opponent has a Wasteland. Brett will probably main phase the Wasteland and just waste a waste. Or he'll just, or, or he'll cast a spell and be content getting Wastelanded. Another, another Matron. Uh, That's two Matrons now. The second Matron, it looks like it's going to be tutoring up. It could be another Chieftain, it could be a Ringleader. There's the Ringleader. Ringleader does require a little bit of mana, but there still is an Aether Vial. Still so an Aether, just, yeah. Even if he gets Wastelanded, he can up the um, Aether Vial in order right. to make that. And the Ringleader just then starts this avalanche of goblins. It's also worth noting that a lot of the spells that are in Brett Farise's deck, quote unquote, watering it down, have been cast, so it's a little bit less watery. Right, uh, the, the creature is probably going to come attached with, Ringleader will probably come attached with at least a draw two. And there is, Denny appears to have drawn a Stoneforge Mystic, uh, which is a very big game here. He is playing Sword of Fire and Ice, which is his likely target. And Brett has pitched a Shattering Spree, so Sword of Fire and Ice, could, which is what he's getting. Uh, very strong right now, and he's going to waste the Wasteland off. He's going to cast it. Now, with the cast there, I don't know if I would cast it in that position. Because we now he's already seen a Shattering Spree out of Brett Paris. He might be seeing more Shattering Sprees, and I think getting that hidden in with it is very important. We go up to four. Tap. What we'll, what we'll, what we'll almost certainly see here uh, is... Oh. So Sharpshooter and a war chief. And remember, Sorry, a chieftain. chieftain. Remember that Brett has a Gem Palm Incinerator in hand, which will almost certainly get cast on the Stoneforge Mystic. The cycling of that gem palm incinerator is just such a beating, too. Yes, oh, and he does not going to waste wait. time. Doesn't want doesn't want anything happening in response. Uh, which is also effectively a stone rain due to da due to Gaia's cradle. This is true. He draws another gem palm incinerator off the incinerator. In for four. Goblins doing what goblins does best. Actually, I find it very one of my favorite things about Legacy is that one of the best card advantage aggro decks is a mono red deck. Uh, let me let me change your statement. One of the best card advantage decks. Just, just yeah, some of the most raw card, yeah. Mono red goblins have some of the best card advantage in the format. Yeah, you which, don't even have to be limiting I don't, it I don't, I don't, You're right, I don't have to say aggro. It's, yeah, it has some of the best card advantage in the format, and it's red, you know, a, t a, a color typically known for overwhelming its opponents with card advantage. <laughs> That's what I like to do with my red decks. If he has that land, he can cast a Chieftain, he can Ethervile in a Siege Gang Commander, and he can attack for approximately a billion. I think it's actually a billion and three, if you do the math. <laughs> and we have a small Earthquake. Oh. Siege Gang Commander. Siege Gang Commander with three and friends. Three friends. So one, two, three, four, five one ones, and two two twos. And remember, Denny has already used a number of, uh, of Swords to Plowshares. He could well have another one. There's three of the Star City Games Goblin tokens. So we have five, seven, eight, nine. Chieftain. That's, and, oh, <laughs> and there there's we go. another one. Wrong pile, but that's okay. It's still going to be one, Not two, even, three, four Denny, damage. Denny was, <laughs> was on the ready for that sort of thing. Now, if Denny happens to have a um, Scrib Ranger. And Denny has the path, a path to exile for the, for the oh, so, nice. so much removal. But Any even Scrib so. Ranger, Scrib Ranger, Scrib this, Ranger? This is where the real card advantage comes into play. Uh, okay, no Scrib Ranger at the end of the turn. I was going to say we could have an equipped, equipped sword vigilant guy coming sword. in. <laughs> Knight of the Reliquary equipped. Okay. He might be too, it might be too late might now. might be too late. Uh, all, all it really takes is a well-timed burn spell. He can put Denny down to five. Uh, and the problem is that Denny has no way to really gain life right now on the table. See how many lands he gets that can... No, none of his lands really help in that matter either. If I were uh, Brett, I would just come on in with everybody. Eyes on the prize. Your opponent's at 10. Better, let's make that number smaller. And there is a goblin ringleader being held off screen right there. It'll be five if nothing tricky happens. Oh my goodness. Major, and, he, and just so you know, Brett does play a second siege gang commander. Oh, he's getting a kiki-jiki perhaps? 
Oh. Uh, it's a kiki he's jiki. getting a. Did you see? Have we it seen was a kiki jiki. All right. You can put the kiki jiki into play and then copy. Copy matron. Copy, copy ringleader. ringleader. This is where what we mean when we say that mono red is the best card advantage. One of the best card advantage decks in Legacy. And here comes, going to not even, he's going to make it, make it main phase, Kiki Jiki. Kiki Jiki, Jiki. Which one? making Those another ring goblin leader. ringleader. Next turn, Kiki Jiki will make a matron, which will get a siege gang, which will get viled into play, which will probably be lethal. So, well, Kiki will probably, to be fair, Oh, another ringleader. ringleader oh, two another more ringleaders. Factor fiction, factor fiction. <laughs> Only the vial was on four. No, which is totally unnecessary. Okay, remember, one of those matrons cannot attack, so hold back one matron. Okay, there it is. Yep. There's the one. Block, take five, go to five. Now, uh, go, to sat, go to three. There's a 2-2 two, two ringleader token. Oh, are there? I didn't even see the little dice. The, the copied ringleader. It's oh, yeah, a that's little right, green that's bead right. at the bottom of your screen. So Denny now at three. Now, Denny needs something awesome. He's going to have to attack regardless, I think, just to kill the Kiki GP. I'm not sure Denny has anything awesome enough in his deck to not take three from this army. He has no sweepers. He has to attack. Deal the damage, draw a card, kill the Kiki Jiki. And that's not going to be enough. He gets, to, he gets to draw a card. He can find something awesome. Uh, if he found a Scrib Ranger, he could get a... Uh, untap the Knight of the Reliquary, get a Maze of If. We're getting enough? closer. I don't think so. I think we're still... We're still dead? <laughs> I'm, we're still, I'm I think, trying. I think we're still dead. Uh, he could get a Scavenging Ooze and gain some life. And, and that's the not there. Brett Paris with Mono Red Goblins takes down his targeted foe. He takes down Denny Chan playing Maverick. Two games to zero.